Fair enough. Okay. So we signed in today. We got raided. And uh, the first thing I was met with was a respawn screen and a player's name. So I'm here to tell you, you know, when you get raided, it's all about going back and learning. You may lose everything. You may not. I'm here to tell you that that's not the end of the fight. It's just the beginning. And if anything, if you get completely wiped, you can take some solitude and say, you know, come back to the base, see how it was done, right? So in the future, when you add to your base, uh, you can make some of those adjustments. So you can say, hey, you know, uh, this worked, this didn't. Oh, no, I fell down. <laughs> oh, good thing I have a ladder. <laughs> okay, so this is what I was met with. I was met with a respawn screen. I had to walk back in. I came in the doorway here. Uh, I didn't know if we had TC or not, which was big. I thought we got hard rated. Came in here, saw we had a perimeter TCs here. And then I saw the immediate hole on the top. So I was like, okay, we'll see how far they got. And as I got closer, I saw that we still had tool covered. So I immediately was like, hey, you know, it's not that bad. You know, like we lost some stuff. And then the other thing I tried to do was <coughs> I crossed over here to see. I'm like, okay, this is most likely the point of entry. I didn't hear anybody else in the base. I also went around to check for turrets. We did have one turret sitting right above this ladder right here. So I knew they, they hard popped that turret. And they obviously <laughs> that's the point of entry. But what I did notice, because I didn't notice the hole in the wall yet, I went around to check the turrets to see if they were destroyed. Some of them had been attacked. Some of them had not been. <coughs> Excuse me. This one I still had all its bullets. But I noticed they tried to move around a little bit in the compound, and some of them got popped because some of these are missing ammo. Some of them are just a little bit damaged. So I'm sure it caught a few people. We didn't actually beef this out as, as, as high as it could be. We were just having so much fun doing the raid and stuff. Oh, we got a naked sitting outside here. <coughs> Who is this dude? Okay. There you go. You gonna try to shoot me, dude? Anyways, so we went through to analyze the area and to make sure I'm gonna probably have to cap this sooner than later. Look at this. So what happens when you do it live. This guy's gonna hit me in the back. Dude, you really you really want some of this, dude? Don't make me come down there. All right, well, <laughs> hang on a second. Let's handle this problem. All right, so then I noticed the hole in the wall outside. So a hole in the wall outside. Oh, I actually have it on me. Perfect. So then I'm like, hey, that's perfect. We can, uh, we can plug this up pretty quick. So I started taking ladders off and all that good stuff. They're right here. That's the hole. We can just plug it again. Not a problem. There you go. We're good. Okay, so it stops people like that from coming in. So we may have a stray walking around. I'm sorry. I don't know where that guy went. Anyways, um, so I noticed I went up here immediately and noticed that the top tiles were blown off. Right? It could kind of like spot check the damage to see, okay, <coughs> you know, roughly where they got in. We didn't stick an armored door here, unfortunately. So that didn't stop them, but this is where my bed was, so they clearly came in here and popped this. This was already closed, so this took damage. I think this wall took a little damage, or was it this frame? So it looks like they blew in here. Um, they smashed this tile so much they decided, hey, it's probably worth it for us to go downstairs, and they did. What's really great, though, is I, I took off the door that I actually put back on because I was scared. This is as far as they made it. That's it. They got our quick grab kits, which were kind of skimpy, to be fair after the whole uh, raid thing the other day. Um, I don't think we reloaded our shotgun trap, so let that be a lesson. As you let people in, make sure you reload it. This was our ore processing area, but I think as we process things, we move them up. So I don't think it was that bad. And then they got here, and then they said, we're out of money. So it looks like they definitely did some, some rocket damage. Or no, explode damage, probably. Because the floor looks a little damaged, or else this would have been knocked out. Oh, it's about half. So what's great here is, look, I can open the door, nobody can pass through this, and then I immediately started to craft, you you guessed it, doors. <laughs> and um, this is another good lesson. Um, always try to leave a full two stacks of almost everything on the interior uh, for situations just like this, um, which we did not do, which was 100% my fault. So, All right, so we're going to grab this, and we're going to grab these doors, and we're going to see what we can do. And then you have to go outside and pick up all the ladders, so people like <laughs> the dude outside... Don't come skeezing in on you. So um, immediately try to plug the hole in the exterior, but I don't know if I have enough cheese to do so, so we're going to try to make do, but we're going to try to protect the core as quickly as possible, so we're going to stick the door down. Hopefully this guy doesn't skis on us. There we go. And yeah, kind of assess the damage around the actual compound itself. 
I did make a double door. If I can make a frame, I'll probably slap one right here. Because that's pretty nice quick access, to be fair. And this was a garage door initially, because these all got blown off. Yeah, there was a garage door here. There was a garage door here. And there was a hard door here. So they spent a considerable amount of cheese to get in. It looks like a combination of rockets, expo ammo, and possibly C4 this late in the game. So again, as you start to dissect things like this, you really go, okay... You know, how much money did they have? How big was the group? I got one name out of it. It was Valentina, which is a, a streamer name or a privacy name or whatever. The random names that they generate. So we do know that. Uh, we had a garage door here and a garage door here, and these were all blown off. What's really cool is if we have any sulfur in here, we might. Um, they didn't get in this. But they did destroy one. I guess it was kind of hanging out, huh? There we go. We got a thousand sulfur. <laughs> and let's not forget our shop on the other side is going gangbusters. So go ahead and put this stuff inside here. I'll come back to this later. Actually, no, I can I can put it back on. What's up, guys? He says, glad it wasn't too big of a loss to static to the sound. I know, right? It really wasn't too bad. It really wasn't. I think we might have had some sulfur in here for processing, but our boys are pretty good about moving it up when that's the case. So, okay, to go back to, you know, what do you do once you get hit? Um, a lot of times you always want to make sure you're doing research. You want to make sure that uh, you've got your stuff deep in the core, stuff that's not going to give people a raid boost, stuff like sulfur, stuff like pre-crafted um, raiding tools, stuff like satchels, C4, uh, uh, explosive ammo, that kind of thing. Um, see how all our best stuff is sitting in here? Yeah, see the boys The boys know what's up. We have our sulfur chilling in here. And to be fair, uh, most of our... Is that a scientist? <laughs> most of our stuff was already used in the raid. So these guys really... The amount of cheese they spent was not worth it. Plus, it's the end of the raid. So what's really great is they came in here and they saw three doors. <laughs> and they go, I don't know. <laughs> Which clearly tells me that um, that they ran out of cheese. But anyways, to go back to the original point, make sure you're always researching stuff. Um, it's not a terrible idea to make a secondary base and beef it up. Because there is a thing in this game, uh, PCN, the console edition. Once you reach a certain size, the upkeep starts to go up precipitously. It's to stop... Um, like giant zergs from existing um, or it makes them say hey look uh, if you want a base that big you got to be in the board and playing and be present so that makes a lot of sense um, so yeah sometimes when you start to get about this big you um, like uh, this is kind of all over the place but one of the things you want to think about is like look our base is only two stories tall right if we wanted to add a third floor, that's going to be about the max we can probably afford with the group size that we have, which is another big part of it. But anyways, the point is, um, let me just show you what this looks like out here. There might be a dude still skeezing around. So yeah, you can see, like, if I went four stories, this would start to become very expensive. But, um, I mean, already, uh, to kind of rewind, um, if you make a secondary base, you know, make it really tough, make it tiny and then you know make it close to your base or move it around but a lot of people always ask me like hey what do i do you know after i get raided or how do i avoid it i think raiding raid raiding raiding <laughs> raiding is unavoidable sometimes uh but you can do things to kind of soften the blow carve the outside of your base with stone you can make sure you're not aggroing the biggest groups possible and make sure you're staying away from places like launch site. Um, we're pulling aggro just by our existence here on the edge of the launch site, as you can see. Uh, chads live around the launch site. That's just the way it is. So, you know, keep that in mind, too. And, you know, split it up. And you can also go guerrilla warfare and start to bury your stuff in stashes. Just make sure they're in good spots where people aren't going to walk over it. Remember, you don't need a shovel or any type of tool to undo it. They just need to be looking in that direction for, like, a second and a half, and it'll unbury itself. So anyways, um, yeah, so one of the things to kind of rewind again, as I'm looking at the base, or there are things I'm going to change about this. I'm going to not make that a turret port anymore, which is kind of nice that they blew this off because now I don't have to uh, knock off the frames. I can just make this a solid piece of honeycomb. I'm definitely going to uh, stick an armor door here. Uh, we'll still have the same configuration. We'll plug this up. Uh, we'll beat this out. This will be a piece of honeycomb. And if we do add any turrets, they'll probably be sitting on this pedestal and on another side. And that brings up another interesting point. They looked at this base enough to go, okay, this is the weakest side. So I know that I need to beef up the not only the honeycomb, but also the turret protection because that's pretty beefy. And again, if you can afford it and you have the blueprints, cages on the exterior and then sticking your turrets on the inside is a good play. And, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of the takeaway from this one. Um, you know, we're going to beef out our, our different corners, make some of the doors even more powerful. Um, look at this. Our little spawn pocket is totally good. 
So there you go. That's uh, us getting raided, and um, it's not that bad, you know? I um, Who said in chat they said every raid is a learning experience? I really do believe that, and it really helps get your build that much better, whether you're using somebody's build, like ours, like this is the Terrapin, right? Up in the right uh, right hand corner, right? Or I'm going to put it in chat right now. <laughs> Ready? Terrapin. But yeah, um, there's always things you can do to improve it and to uh, to make things a bit better. So remember, don't go bigger than you can afford and always be thinking about how can somebody raid this base. That's the breakdown, baby. I'll start taking these ladders off the side. <laughs> 